Hey friends, Matt aka Martin here, and in this video what I want to do is explore ways in which you can design synthesizer presets specifically for use with MPE, which is MIDI Polyphonic Expression. And in this particular video we're going to be using Ableton Live's Drift Synthesizer to demonstrate a lot of these techniques, because I think it's a really powerful and useful synthesizer, particularly when it comes to demonstrating simple synthesizer techniques, and it utilizes MPE in a really smart way, so I think it's a great synthesizer for this video. So for those of you who don't know, MPE stands for MIDI Polyphonic Expression. Expression. And essentially what it does is allow us to apply modulation to certain synthesizer parameters on a per note basis as opposed to the synthesizer as a whole. Every MIDI note is just a series of messages and these messages can be used to modulate pretty much any parameter inside of a synthesizer. Now there are lots of different MIDI messages but the main ones that we use per note are note on, note off, velocity and note number. Note number generally determines the pitch of an oscillator. Note on triggers the beginning of an envelope. Note off triggers the release stage of an envelope. And the velocity generally triggers how hard that note is hit, which is generally attached to something like volume of an oscillator. Now, although all of these MIDI messages are generally tied to these parameters, theoretically they can be used to control any parameter of a synthesizer. For example, velocity is also often used to control things like the filter frequency cutoff. Now, most MIDI controllers also offer offer up controls in the form of a mod wheel and a pitch wheel, which also allow us to modulate other parameters, but again on a synthesizer as a whole basis instead of a per note basis. For example, we could use the mod wheel to control the speed or rate of an LFO, which is attached to control the pitch of an oscillator, thereby basically creating a vibrato type effect. Or we could use the pitch bend to bend all of the notes of a synthesizer that is currently playing simultaneously. Now MPE adds the ability to adjust multiple parameters on a per note basis instead. It gives us the option to bend individual notes as well as apply modulation to individual notes using both pressure and slide control. And the idea of this is that we gain more expressivity over the performance of a sound. Now it should be noted that MPE is generally best used from a performance perspective and not so much from a programmable perspective, which is why when designing sounds with MPE in mind, we should typically think about how we can utilize those parameters for performance purposes using an MPE capable controller, something like the Ableton Push 3, for example. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at how we can design some sounds specifically for use with MPE using Drift inside of Ableton Live. Okay, so here I have the Drift synthesizer loaded up inside of Ableton Live, and to demonstrate the MPE effects in this video, I'm gonna be using the Ableton Push 3, which allows us to apply both per note pitch bend, pressure, and slide controls. So to start, we need to create some kind of a basic sound. And for this, we're gonna create a basic pad sound because generally these types of sounds are really good at showcasing the possibilities of MPE from a performance aspect. So to create a pad sound, first of all, what I'm gonna do is just turn off the second oscillator here. I'm going to increase the attack and the release of the amplitude envelope. We'll increase the decay as well, increase the attack a bit more, pull down the sustain, and I'm also going to reduce the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter here. And now we have just a really simple kind of slow moving pad sound with a sawtooth wave. Next, we could potentially add some unison. So I might go to the unison options here, switch this to stereo, increase the stereo spread amount, increase the drift a little bit as well, and potentially let's add a little bit of noise into this synthesizer, engage the second oscillator, which is set to be a sine wave, an octave down. Let's change this to a triangle wave and just increase the level of this ever so slightly. We could increase the resonance of this filter a little bit, maybe add a bit of a high pass filter. And now we're ready to start adding some more expressivity and performance to this preset by adding some MPE modulation. So we have two main per note controls that we can use with MPE to adjust different parameters, pressure and slide. Let's start by looking at assigning pressure to control some parameters inside of this synthesizer. So generally speaking, when we're assigning pressure to some kind of a parameter in our synthesizer, we want that parameter to be used to accentuate that note or sound in some way, shape or form. Generally, something like a filter frequency is really good for this. So what I'm gonna do here is go to my filter 
and come down to the frequency modulation section in the filter. And here we're gonna switch this first drop down menu to pressure, which it is by default. And then we can just increase or play around with the modulation depth to control how much the pressure of a note increases or decreases the filter frequency. So let's increase this a little bit and I'll pull down the filter frequency control. And now we'll be able to hear that as I apply more pressure to a single note, the filter just on that particular note will open up a little bit. Just to show you this a little bit more visually, what I'm gonna do is actually add the MPE control device before this drift synthesizer. And here we can see this just allows us to see the incoming MPE controls. In this case, we're set to see pressure. And so there, hopefully you could see that as there was a higher pressure on individual notes, it was just that note that had an increase on its filter frequency. So now let's think about adding slide to adjust a parameter. And when it comes to using slide in an MPE performance context, generally speaking, instead of using slide to accentuate notes, we just wanted to change something about the timbre or tone of the sound. Adjusting something like the addition of noise or maybe the shaping like the sync or pulse width of an oscillator is generally a really good option for using slide. In the case of this synthesizer here, we have the option to adjust the shape of the first oscillator using the slide control per note. Just to show you what adjusting the shape parameter sounds like to start with, if I play a note, So in the case of this particular synthesizer, this shape parameter on the sawtooth wave is adjusting the sync. Now, again, this could be something like pulse width or potentially any other type of timbral adjustment. But so for this, let's have our slide control the shape of this oscillator one. Again, let's go to this drop down menu, make sure it's set to slide and just increase this percentage amount here a little bit. So that now on the Ableton Push 3 here, when I play higher up or lower down on one of these different pads, it's actually going to change the slide position. Again, to show this, I'm gonna to switch to the slide tab on the MPE control device and you'll see the incoming slide is being used to adjust the shape control. Let's turn down the amount that that's actually adjusting it. And let's also use the slide control to increase the level of the noise a little bit. So to do this, I'm gonna go over to the mod tab, change our mod here to slide, change our destination to the noise gain, and just increase this percentage a little bit as well. So now we have slide controlling both the shape of the first oscillator and the increase of the gain of the noise oscillator. Just so we can see both pressure and slide at the same time, I'm gonna duplicate this MPE control, switch the first one to pressure and have this second one on slide. So that now you can see both the incoming pressure and slide per note at once. And have a listen to how it shapes the sound on a per note basis. Let's go ahead and adjust some of the modulation levels here. So I'll just pull down that slide a little bit. I'll maybe pull down the noise gain a little bit as well. Maybe we can increase the level of this second oscillator a bit too, and the first oscillator, why not? Let's also increase the release of our envelope a little bit too, and maybe just increase the flow pass filter frequency. And now also don't forget that just because we're using MPE doesn't mean that we should neglect the non-MPE modulation parameters as well, such as velocity, note, and mod wheel and pitch bend wheel. So if we're assigning velocity to control a parameter, generally speaking, we think of it in the same way as pressure. If you hit a note harder, generally it means you want to accent it. So we might want to assign velocity to something that accentuates the note. Now, by default in drift, our velocity is already set to control the volume. But what we actually could do is set it up so that we have say the LFO here, set this to a linear envelope and have this to control the filter frequency 
Here we can come down to our frequency modulator, use our LFO to increase that a little bit. And now we could have the velocity actually control the amount of this LFO. So let's come down to the amount here, change the mod to velocity, increase this to 100% and pull the amount all the way down. So now a higher velocity will mean that the LFO is affecting the frequency of this filter more and more. And now when using the mod wheel, the same concept as kind of when we're applying modulation using slide applies. And we don't necessarily want it to accent particular notes or sounds. Generally speaking, we want it to adjust the timbre in some way, shape or form. So for instance, something we could do with the mod wheel is actually use it to maybe increase the gain of the second oscillator here. And again, that's gonna apply it across the entirety of the synthesizer and not on a per note basis. So in order to do this, I'm gonna go over to the mod tab, go to our second modulation here, select mod wheel from the drop down menu. From our second drop down menu, we're gonna select oscillator two gain, pull the oscillator two volume down a little bit, and then increase this percentage amount a fair amount. So that now when I change the position of the mod wheel, it's either gonna increase or decrease the gain of the second oscillator. Here on the Ableton Push 3, I can just hold down the select key and press the touch strip, and that's gonna switch it from a pitch bend to a mod wheel. And now as I adjust this mod wheel, it's actually going to adjust the level of the oscillator two gain. Actually, just the way in which this works, let's increase the noise, let's increase oscillator two here a little bit. Let's change this down one more octave and switch the oscillator type to maybe a square wave so that it's even more noticeable. And hopefully you could hear there the square wave two octaves below come in as we adjusted the positioning of the mod wheel. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, I'd love to invite you to leave a like down below, subscribe if you're new, and if you really enjoy videos like this, why not consider heading over to my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can support me by buying me a coffee, becoming a member, or downloading some really cool stuff from my shop. There'll be a link down below in the description. Also, I'd like to let you all know that I just released an online course, which is all about the fundamentals of making music using Ableton Live. There'll be more information about that down below in the description as well. So now to showcase some other examples of designing sounds with an MPE focus using Drift, here are some presets that I've created that you can also grab from my Buy Me A Coffee page. So here we have a pad sound. And in the case of this sound, we actually have the pressure controlling the main output volume of the device. The slide is actually controlling the filter frequency in this sense, but it doesn't have a huge modulation depth. So it's kind of more just adjusting the timbre of the sound. And then we also have the mod wheel adjusting the gain of the noise. It's pretty subtle and the velocity is also controlling the output volume of the synthesizer as well. Here's a more extreme example of a pad sound. And by the way, there's no effects applied to these, of course, these are just raw out of the synthesizer. In this instance, the pressure is controlling the filter frequency, the slide is controlling the depth or amount of the LFO, which is controlling the pitch of the oscillator. And this is in an FM rate modulation. And then our modulation wheel is controlling the rate of our second envelope here, which is actually being used as an LFO. And that is controlling the depth of the filter frequency as well. But again, that's at an audio rate. So that's why we get that really kind of harsh, crunchy, bit reduced sound. This next example is a bass sound. We have the velocity and the slide controlling the low pass filter frequency. And then we have the pressure controlling the gain of the second oscillator here, which is a higher octave sawtooth wave.
Here's a more keys kind of pluck type sound. In this example, slide is again controlling the shape of our oscillator here, and pressure is controlling the rate of the LFO, so the harder we press, the faster the LFO gets. We also have the modulation wheel here controlling the low pass filter frequency. For some more interesting expressivity in the performance of the sound. The last example here is a lead sound. Here we have the mod wheel controlling the shape of the oscillator and then we have the slide controlling the filter frequency and the pressure is controlling the amount of the LFO which is attached to control the pitch of the first oscillator. And this is kind of contrary to assigning pressure to more accenty things and slide to more timbral things, but in the case of this particular sound, I feel that it works from an intuitive point of view. And that's something you should take on board when you're designing your own presets as well, is how does it feel to you to perform that sound? Again, if you want to download these drift presets and experiment with them yourself, you can download them from my Buy Me A Coffee page. You will, of course, need some kind of MPE capable controller to really get the full experience from them. Otherwise, make sure to check out this video right here for a bunch of reasons why I actually really love Ableton Live's Drift Synthesizer and I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something and I'll see you all in the next video.